So great news, Blackmagic Design has finally released DaVinci Resolve 19 and there are truly amazing new features on all pages. I have been trying out these new features uh, for a few days now and I can easily say that it's an update worth waiting for. While there are significant improvements on other pages as well, especially in Fairlight, I'm particularly excited about the improvements on the color page. In the coming days, I plan to create more detailed tutorials, but for now, I just want to quickly go over what's new. Okay, first of all, there are a very small change in the interface. They have moved the clips button here. Other than that, everything remains in its place. Firstly, we have a brand new tool called Color Slice. This tool has actually been in DaVinci for a very long time, but I never thought to use it. Converting it into a panel like this is a, I think, really good idea. We have six vector slices with all the colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. They have also added a skin tone parameter. With these parameters, you can adjust the density and saturation of individual colors, and the changes you make won't affect the exposure of your footage. I think this will create a great deal of convenience. There are two bars for each parameter. The first one affects the density of the color, and the second one affects its saturation. Now, as we see in this image, the model is wearing a yellow jacket. Click on the highlight button just above the viewer. They have also added a button here to see which color affects where. Let's click on it. And now we can see where the yellow is affecting. There is almost very little green in our image. We can see the other colors like this too. Let's say we want to change the color of the model's jacket. Let's give some saturation to the yellow. As you can see, it gives the color very nicely and only the areas with yellow are affected. It also affects the skin tone slightly, but that's okay. Now let's change the density. You can also adjust the exact position of the color you want with the slider here. You can also make hue adjustments from here. Let's say we want to see the jacket a little more orangey. I'm pulling it somewhere around here. I'm reducing the saturation a bit. I will also change the density a little. Yes, this is before, this is after. The hair and skin tone are slightly affected by these changes. We can solve this by masking it. Let's draw a mask around the jacket. I'm not going to bother too much. I'm just creating a simple mask to see the effect. Let's soften it a bit. Now, for a good result, let's also track it. Okay, our tracking is done. I'm turning off the overlay to see it a little bit better. As you can see, the tracking works very well. This is before, this is after. I mean, this tool is really great. I can already imagine using it in many places. Maybe we can make some changes in the skin tone too. I will create a new node. I'm putting a circle window around her face. Then, we can make changes using the skin tone parameter. We can reduce the density a bit and give it some saturation. Yes, this is before, this is after. This is before, this is after with all the adjustments. Okay, great. They have also placed settings that affect the overall image at the top of this panel. Again, you can adjust density and saturation from here as well. Let's look at another clip. I'm increasing the density a bit. We can use density depth to bring it exactly where you want. Let's also increase the saturation a little bit. Similarly, you can achieve the exact result you want using saturation depth and saturation balance. There is also a hue adjustment at the top left corner of the panel. This is before, this is after. Not bad at all. Maybe we want to achieve a different kind of look. Let's focus on the reds. I'm reducing its saturation a bit. I'm also playing around with the yellow, greens and magentas. Of course, we haven't achieved a fantastic result yet. I just want to show quickly what can be done with this tool. Some strange colors appeared around the edges of this flower. Anyway, no big deal. Actually, let's look at this footage as an example. There's plenty of red in this clip and we can make it more visually appealing. I'm first increasing the saturation of the red. Also, skin tone is affected by this. Let's also increase the density. I reduce density and saturation in the skin tone parameter. I want to bring out the green in the background a bit more. Let's start with the yellow. We can increase saturation and density a bit and maybe adjust the hue a little. Green isn't very prominent in this area. As you can see, 
the intensity is mostly in the yellow. Now let's take a general look. This is before, this is after. It's really intense and intriguing. Maybe we can decrease the density a bit and adjust the hue. This is before, this is after. Yeah, much better. Okay, now onto the second most interesting feature, the Film Look Creator tool. I think this tool serves as a response to the increasing number of third-party plugins on the market. It's designed as an effect where all your settings and effects are consolidated in one place. However, I won't delve into this in detail in this video. I believe this tool deserves a dedicated tutorial, so I will share one in the coming days, so don't miss that video. Our third improvement is related to tracking. The new tool called IntelliTrack, supported by the DaVinci Resolve's neural engine, is designed to optimize tracking and stabilization processes in the color and fusion pages. Let's see how we can use it on the color page. I will use this footage of a drifting car. Let's click on the tracker menu, select IntelliTrack from the menu in the bottom right corner of the panel. Then we need to open a window where we will track our subject. I'm creating a simple window around the car with the pen tool. Let's go back to the tracker, click on the add tracker point button in the bottom left corner. And then I'm placing these points on top of the car. Then we can start the tracking process by clicking forward and backward buttons. As you can see, our track is working, but the window needs some adjustments at certain points. Let's adjust the window a little bit. For now, it's not very important. I just want to give an idea of how it can be used. Let's soften the mask a bit. Okay. Now let's increase the softness of both inside and outside. Now we can make the desired changes. For example, we can make adjustments with the primary sliders. We can increase the contrast a bit. Maybe you want an interesting effect. We can go to blur menu and increase the sharpness and you can achieve a different effect by making fine adjustments here. Yes, it's quite good, but of course adjustments may be needed in the necessary areas, especially about the windows. Actually, I want to quickly show IntelliTrack in the Fusion page. Let's switch to Fusion. With Media in 1 selected, press Ctrl Space, type Tracker and press Enter. Then place the track point that appears in the window on top of the car. Now we can track forward and backward. Now that we have our tracking data, we can add anything to it. Let's add text, click and drag it, then connect it to the tracker node. Select the tracker node, click on operations in the tracker menu. From this menu, select match mode. Now we can select the text node and write something. Um, I'm just going to write drift master. <laughs> Let's place this text on top of the car. As you can see, our text follows the car very well. Okay, now onto our next feature, Ultra Noise Reduction. This is also powered by the Neural Engine. Quite a few AI supported features have been added, I think. Let's try it out quickly. So let's assume we will use the first node as a noise reduction. Click on the Motion Effects icon under Spatial Noise Reduction. Click on Mode. Select Ultra Noise Reduction option at the bottom and click Analyze. After clicking, a box appears in the viewer. We can resize and reposition it. Each time we change its position, see that the luma and chroma settings will update. Let's take a closer look. This is before, this is after. Well, I think it works quite well. Of course, this effect may strain your computer a bit, so keep that in mind while using it. All right, lastly, I will explain another effect, a brand new feature called Defocus Background. Let's search for it in the effects library and add it to our node. When we first add it, nothing happens because we need to specify what's in the foreground for the effect. I will use the magic mask for this. Let's choose better for the quality and select the person. Then use the plus icon qualifier to select the people in the image. You can add multiple lines for a better selection. From here, we can adjust the mask settings and view our mask. Now we can make adjustments from the effects menu. Let's increase the blur level and decrease the saturation. You can also change the background color from here. And we also have some advanced options. Increasing anamorphism mimics anamorphic lenses. 
while the Gaussian option creates a simpler blur effect. All right, that's how this tool works. Of course, after making adjustments, we need to track it. I assume this effect works better in a less complex scene. All right, guys, that's all for now. I think it's a very good update. There are many other good features that I haven't explained or even tried yet. I would like to cover them in a more comprehensive video. If you have any questions, don't forget to write them in the comments. If you like this video, you can support me by subscribing to the channel. So thank you for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.